and gentlemen, welcome to episode 26 of Check the Wire. Myself, Dan Giesling, Ryan Gary Letourneau, aka Northern Line. What's going on, man? Not too much. Uh, happy to be here. Very happy that we have entered the Thursday zone yet again. Thursday. Feel like it's it's much nicer once you get a little. You know, you got some some food digesting in your stomach from having ate, eaten throughout the week, as opposed to coming in parched and and famished on Mondays. So, is this? Are you making a an analogy that this is kind of like the bathroom of what you do after you eat for the uh, week? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think this is this is the nap. This is the post Thanksgiving dinner nap where you talk about you know all the other family is left, and then you go, man, I didn't know Uncle uh, Uncle John had such uh, bold opinions about that kind of stuff. I... <laughs> What's your take on naps? Like, if, are you a nap guy? Could you be a I nap am, guy? Oh, I'm very, I'm not anti-nap in the sense that, like, if you nap, you're, like, lazy or anything like that. I'm very pro-sleep. Like, I, I fight for my, like, eight hours or at least seven hours of sleep a night while I still have the opportunity. But I, I always feel like I have such a hard time getting to sleep for a nap that to sleep for 45 minutes takes me like three hours. And then when I wake up, my mouth feels super weird from like a daytime nap. So I'm not a, uh, I'm not a nap guy. Is How it because you? your mouth isn't running during the three hours? Oh. Is normal? No, no, I don't mean that in a bad way, but like, you know, you're, you're, you're cranking out videos. You know what I think? I think it's because uh, I typically, if I nap, I don't brush my teeth before I nap. And then I sleep with my mouth open and all sorts of, bacteria and grossness is going on in there whereas at night when you sleep you brush your teeth you wake up you brush your teeth it feels feels fresh yeah i got it i got it but everybody tells you so i'm interested in your insight everybody tells me when you know you have a newborn you're going to get into naps because you know you never know when you're going to get that like 45 minutes or two hours that you can actually fit some sleep in yeah you know we we talked about a little bit on team unity tuesday i'm just saying man the book like you know the book, it, there's this book about like babies and sleep. Like, uh, I think I, I, when my sons were like super, super tiny, like you would nap with them, you know, like they, they'd fall asleep on you. That's like, that's like the, the good stuff that you, you get like your window <laughs> is like this big and yeah. now it's like, no, nah, they just want to, you know, tackle and stuff. But no, in terms of nap, <laughs> I feel like it's a big part, you know, and this is coming from a place of, of not knowing, I feel like it's a big part of like, uh, culture overseas like you know for example i have family in italy it's like hey they load up they have this massive meal everyone chills in the middle of the day and then they wake up and do like second work or whatever um i don't know i'm pretty big into into sleep but naps i don't know i it, it could be interesting what if you like what if you what if you put on a show took a yeah. nap in the middle of it <laughs> and then <laughs> came back and it's like two loaded shows i don't know i'm just throwing stuff out at the wall um but anyways, let's get into it. So let's get into the podcast. It's been a really, really interesting week, I think, on both sides of the coin. But you know me, I, I always like to slide in um, with, with your, I want to go with your tippy top be above your W, because I think that's something that it's interesting to talk okay. about. What's your tippy top? So uh, we hit uh, an 800,000, 820,000 subscriber milestone. So, it, and it's been the one that's been like a flashpoint milestone for a lot of people i'm playing through all of doki doki literature club which for people who is not familiar is a visual novel but it's also very subversive so it's kind of like undertale in the sense that like you think maybe it's just a well-written traditional adventure game but it's actually something different so it's like it's a departure for me for like many different reasons one being that it's a visual novel you know at least in principle so there's a lot of like lewdness or at least like like people who you know oh the lady will trip over and you catch her and then you get like a full art panel of her like looking up into your eyes with like descriptions that you're getting increasingly uncomfortable um and then on top of that like there's sensitive issues within the game there's normally stuff that i don't you know play on my channel and then on top of that i've been you know i knew that this was coming i decided i was going to play through the whole game before i uploaded any of it um, just because a, I don't want people to spoil it and B, you know, I know this is the kind of game that inspires that rabid sort of fandom where people will be, you know, in the comments, like, oh, you didn't do this decision on day two, go back. Otherwise like this will happen. And I decided like, I didn't want that to have an impact 
on the series at all because otherwise i'll just cancel it basically (laughs) Because the episodes are a lot of work because, I mean, it's an easy game to play, but there's a lot of reading. By the time I finish like a half hour of the video, I'm like, man, I need like at least a five minute break. But anyway, um, so, yeah, I I don't really have any insight as to how it's going to go, but it's going to be something interesting for sure. And I'm still trying to figure out, like, I don't think I'm going to do the Netflix thing where I drop all the episodes at once because I would love to see the data on it because I bet you would see a peak at episode one and a peak at episode, you know, the finale and everything else in the middle would be creamed probably. Um, but I, I'm interested to see how people think about it. I, I definitely think there's going to be the the feedback in principle has been positive. People are like, I think that's the right way to tackle this game because you're not supposed to, you know, it, it's a game where it's better to not have what happens later spoiled for you. Um, but there's, I'm sure there's also going to be some people that like, I, inevitably, I'm sure in one of the episodes, I make a mistake that leads to something catastrophic happening to somebody's favorite character. And they're going to be like, I hate you for this. But <laughs> at the same time, I just, you know, I'll so, get over it. So it's pretty interesting to me because I have a question for you. So if this is like this is so outside of your normal box. You said it touches upon some issues, It you know, it, in all respects of the term. It's like, a you know, has maybe some math this type type properties to the game. Yes. Uh, so so why did you decide to do that as a milestone if it's like think, completely so far out of the box? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the that's kind of the the way that I wrote the milestones, uh, you know, in March was like, I don't want to have milestones that are just things that I would probably do normally, because I think that that's a missed opportunity to some extent. But it might actually be better for analytics. I don't know if you put like you know, if I get 825,000 subscribers, I'll do like a one hour Fall Guys video or something like that. Um, but I, I, I think that it's an opportunity to be like, hey, thanks for your support. I'm going to try something that otherwise I won't do. And it's kind of like enveloped in this idea that it's a special occasion because of the fact that you only hit this milestone once, you know, over the course of your your YouTube. Well, hopefully, at least <laughs> I guess you could, <laughs> I guess you could dip under and come back. But um so yeah, I mean that's that's the idea for it, and and I guess it's also the it, it gives me an out because of the fact that uh, you know like if people are like do more of this or do it again, I'm like nah, I already you know it's a it's a one time thing, and uh, you know now that it's done, it's done. So really the the not the feedback, but the principle of all the milestones was that like it's either popular stuff that people would love to see, like playing more Splitter Steel. Or it's stuff that w- I know is going to be a slapper, but the w- amount of work involved is going to be insane, like an Isaac tier list of every item. And or it's going to be something that's a complete departure and I'll feel way more open to doing it because of the fact that it's like a one and done sort of thing, like Doki Doki Literature Club. Where, where do you th- I mean, I don't know what your take is on expectations, but what are your expectations for this? Is it one beginning and finale pog everything in the middle? Like not very pog in terms of viewership. I, I I think it depends on on people who don't know what happens in the game. I think there's gonna be a big washout around like episode two when they realize that like like it is a visual novel for a long time. <laughs> like it's just a played straight visual novel for quite some time. But people that do know what goes on in that game, they're going to be lying in the weeds <laughs> for the whole series. Like, I can't wait to see how he reacts to this. And I got to admit, like, I, so I'm not quite done with the game yet, but I've, I've gotten into the meat of the game for sure. And I found myself like, originally, I was kind of like mining it for humor. But as I went on, I was like, this is a really well crafted and, and actually like smart game. Like the way that they... Again, I don't want to spoil anything, obviously. But the way that they actually play with the medium is is a really... It's not just subversive, but it's actually really interesting to kind of... Uh, to experience for yourself. Hmm, that sounds interesting. I, I, I'm, I will probably... <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't think it's a game I would ever play, but I'm like, you got me at least stoked to check out like the first episode then maybe the next couple episodes hit the timestamps where people are like, yeah. you gotta see this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm if kinda... you... 
If you didn't like the atmosphere of playing Life is Strange, you should not play Doki Doki on the show. That's <laughs> but, no, I'll give you that one one hundred percent. I liked I liked the Walking Dead was good. I like uh the Wolf Among Us. And then I, I I like Life is Strange, but I put it like it's like kind of like unwritten culture or unwritten rules in if if I'm playing that on stream then it's my way of telling you like I'm physically ill. So like I can't play Tarkov, <laughs> but I, I'm going to put on a show and like we'll finish Life is Strange. But, uh, you know, I think it's, it. I don't know, with like something like Doki Doki, like did you, and I have no idea what you're talking about spoiler wise, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear the spoilers. Did you know the spoiler going in or you're experiencing it like fresh? No, I, it's, it, and it has been a frustration. Um, I didn't want to learn the spoiler going in, but there were people that were like, I don't even know if you could put this on YouTube. So like, I, I didn't read any of the spoilers, but I kind of read like the content warnings about what it's about. And then I also searched Doki Doki on uh, YouTube and it was like, you know, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, you know, I was like, I'm probably good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll probably be okay to play, to play it on YouTube. Um, as, as long as, you know, you handled some of the sensitive content properly, but uh <laughs> But yeah, so admittedly, I was concerned. I was like, oh, maybe like this is actually too spicy to play, but it's, it's definitely not too spicy to play. But you do want to treat it with some some decorum for sure. <laughs> Are you, do you think you'll premiere the first episode? It might be nice to do it. Yeah. But it, it's kind of weird because like this, it's hard. The, the, reason that the game is special is not really pre present in the first episode. Mm. So I think like premiering the first episode, you know, it's like, going to the theater to see like you know iron man 2 you know it's infinity war is nine years down the road you know you gotta wait a little while i don't know i i might just i don't know i still haven't decided i i honestly don't know how much i have left i've definitely passed like a you know a major event in the game that would seem to indicate we're like halfway through we're roughly um but once i get all the episodes done i'll start to think about how i'm gonna how i'm gonna promote it that's exciting though. So you hit hit that milestone just for for people listening. What's the next milestone? Eight twenty five. So again, uh, just to refresh people's memory and and even my own, um, the round numbers like the ten thousand milestones, eight twenty, eight thirty, are slightly longer things. You know, like Doki Doki Literature Club or like a horror game playthrough. And then the five thousand ones are like one off videos. So like the uh, the last one was we played some smash and it went a little longer cause it was just fun to play. And then it's Doki Doki now, which is taking forever. And then it's, um, I think eight twenty five is split or steel. So okay. just doing some more split or steel, which again, these That's were written in like February. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I, I forget what eight thirty is. Honestly, eight thirty might be like my first ever league of legends game. Oh. I can't, something like that. Cool. Cool. That's exciting. And it, it, you know, to hit the, so you just hit what? 82. Or 80, 80. Yeah, at 820, 815 to 820 took a while. And then 820 uh, to 821 was real fast because of Fall Guys. So we're we're going a little faster towards uh, towards 825, which is nice because, you know, I'd love to play some Splitter Steel. And at the whole point is to get the numbers moving in the first place. So, you know, it, it might seem slow. I mean, my channel, at least over the last, like, few years, grows notoriously slowly for a channel that's, like, at this size. But, you know, this is the first time in like three or four years that the numbers are sustainably moving upwards to the point where they're not completely eroded by when YouTube does like old account purges and stuff like that. Because for a while we were like, you know, 795, da 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 da, 795, da 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 da. So it's, it's nice that we got, we got a little momentum going. You're pushing again. the rock up the hill. It's moving. It, exactly. That's good. Oh, that's, that's cool. Um, I like it. I, I actually like, I got to, you know, talk about milestones. I got a milestone hitting Friday, but I feel like for you, when, when you do milestones, like in my mind, I'm like, okay, we hit it. And then you're like, all right, where do you squeeze it in? Like, how do you squeeze in like the, spe the special video that comes out on Friday or Doki? It's like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I like it, but are you married to your milestones? So you didn't put them all out. You didn't lay out the whole map. You just did like up to 900 or no? Yeah, I think up, up to 850 or 900. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Be but I think, I mean, I agree with it. Just to wrap it into my L, yeah. that is my L of the week. Is like Northern Lion Tries has been way on the back burner. 
And people are like, where is it? And I'm like, well, it's in my recorded videos folder as Doki Doki Literature Club. Because it's it. like, I, it, it, you know, when you make the milestone list uh, months ago, you don't necessarily know where you're going to be at in your life by the time you hit them, which is admittedly something that I could have thought more about. But at the same time, like, you know, recording these Doki Doki videos is taken 45 minutes or an hour per day that really I don't have to spare. So uh, that that's coming from Northern Lion Tries for now. Oh, that's, uh, so so you didn't uh, you didn't redline it. You're like ah, like we're, we'll we'll pull this out because you you want to finish what you um, yeah yeah. No, I was, I'm like I'm pink lined. I'd say all right. So 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 your L is that Northern Line tries fell off, but it's yeah. really Doki Doki tries. Okay, I'm I'm gonna hit you with my L of the week. So I've been posting a lot more on Instagram. And like I had a post and it's got like, it's the most engaged post I've ever had. And like, it has 10,000 likes on an Instagram post, which is I think of 70,000 followers there. So whatever the numbers are in that, like that's, yeah. that's insane. And it's a picture of me watching my friend on TV. So it's like 10,000. Yeah. The next day, I, I think a day later, I post a war zone video. So you gotta remember the post before it, 10,000 likes, the war zone <laughs> video, 300 likes and i'm Bruh. like and someone someone tweeted me and it's like hey like i just i tweeted something about trading cards They're like hey it's cool that you can talk about that in big brother and i'm like you know what i'm like i'm just i feel fortunate that i can talk about what i'm passionate about it doesn't matter how big the circle size is but it's like when you have that sort of disparaging it, it just kind of takes me back to like what are you most passionate about do i want to post like a thousand images of just me on Instagram. No, it's not like that's not in my normal wheelhouse. So like, it's just being like wrapping your head, head around being like, okay, just like, Hey, look, you know, this is going to do really well, but the thing you're actually passionate about is just going to take a lot longer you know, <laughs> to, to, to even get there. But I think for me, it was just like another wake up call of like continuing to not distance, but just be very aware, like something, um, you know, and this kind of, I guess, wraps into the, the the second L is like, I've been pretty fortunate online, you know, having been on, you know, TV twice and all the YouTube and Twitch stuff. Like, I really don't get any at hate at all. Like, really, like, it's all really positive. And before I digress, can you think of anything you've ever gotten, like, really blasted for online? Um, Not really. I mean, like, there's been, all, all this stuff has been when you put it into context is very small mm -hmm. things like, uh, you know, when I did the pot play in Isaac or something like that, or when I, uh, uh, like in Isaac, I did, uh, Hey, I think in greedier mode, don't use keys. Like it's stuff that's on that level. That is like, I made a mistake in a game and then people that take it a little bit too seriously, <laughs> for whatever reason uh you know say there's a well-meaning group of people who are like ah you know poke poke you know this is funny and then there's a bunch of people that are like i'm actually mad <laughs> but then when you put it in context for yourself you're like it's not that bad <laughs> <laughs> so like so you know so you the the smoke you've gotten is from like video game plays right like for the, the most part yeah yeah so like i've just like the past week and it's died down and it's cool but it's the first time i've literally experienced like uh you know, I hate to throw the word out there, but like a toxic wave of like, F you, F you, you ruined this, this, that. And I'm like, and I'm like, and just for context, like it has something to do with Big Brother that's like I have nothing to do with, but it's just an assumption or that, you know, people are whatever. It, it has nothing to do with anything I said or did. And it's just like being at like, I just have so much more empathy because sometimes like you look at someone's account and be like, oh, they said something dumb or not. And they just, maybe they're just themselves and they're getting ripped. And it's like, oh, you know, they can just deal with it. You know, they have like 10 million followers and, you know, they do well or make all. But it's like, man, I just have so much empathy because I, I feel bad that anyone has to deal with that over like minuscule stuff. Like, it's not like if someone does something like horrible, right? Like says something terrible or derogatory or, you know, I'm not saying it's justified, but then you're like, okay, well, you probably should deal with it. But for things that happen online, like, you know, even something like a, pot play or whatever it just like it's really just putting a lot of things in perspective and it's really kind of on my end i don't want to say sh it, shaking me up is not the right word but definitely put things way more in perspective in terms of what we're engaging online and 
I don't want to say the importance of it because it's like a it's like a double edged sword for me because like the community that's a part of Twitch is just amazing and it like it means so much and like I love engaging there. So it's like you gotta like for me it's like you just pick and choose where you engage. So it, it got to a point for me where I'm like it doesn't the stuff that was being sent out it doesn't bother me but there was like reverberations right like other people see that like my family sees it people that work with me see it and they're like they're getting angry and i'm like like that's what kind of really you know turned me a little bit it's like all right well maybe like i always joke about it all the time with you i'm like hey look you keep going after ryan in these comments maybe one day he's just like i'm done you know and then like i kind of feel the same way as like my willingness now to engage in the other community is is like decrease just because it's just like why you know well the way like you talk about other people seeing it yeah. and it making them angry yeah i was seeing it and i was getting angry about it too and i've been you, again it's for context but you know there's something happening on the big brother show that is like a rumor mill uh and i'm not even that privy to it but because i can't look away from the <laughs> it's just so so fascinating to watch like the the community dynamic like it's it's crazy to me that people will tweet basically they'll they'll get so invested in an entertainment product that functionally like i mean I, this sounds rude but like the people on the show don't care about that person at all right <laughs> but their social media presence is dedicated to that person on the show that they really like and then you'll see like terrible things like personal attacks basically designed to just be like rude and and toxic and then you look at the person's profile and their profile is like hey my goal is to spread happiness throughout the <laughs> world or something like good vibes only and i'm like what is wrong with you and I, like i know you won't say it for for good reason but because it's a tangential situation for me i think i can say it frankly a lot of the toxicity online is basically just caused by people who are and i mean the rudeness here <laughs> like complete losers and I, you don't, you don't have to nod or or agree, but like if there's people that get really into something, and they're cool about it, you know, they get really into Big Brother, they talk about the strategy, um, but they recognize at the end of the day that it's an entertainment product. I see it in sports all the time. Like wait, you know, when the Canucks lose a game, there's people that are like, oh man, like I think the Blues played a game that was a little unfair, and I don't like the refs, but whatever, we'll get them tomorrow. And then there's people and you see like dozens and dozens of posts made over the course of like, you know, half an hour that are like, hey, like F you, I hope your team, you know, gets all injured or worse, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just like, it's madness. So like whatever it is, like a small percentage of people have, they lack the self-awareness, A, to recognize that they're being like a piece of garbage. And I, I like it. I don't think it warrants any laughter. They're just deliberately like logging on to make another person feel bad for something related to like a television show that they watch that is completely unrelated to them. And and for whatever reason, like they just get so invested in it that like I don't, I don't think you can phrase it any other way. They're they're losers. Yeah, you know, and see, and my take is is is, and we've talked about this before. Like, if you get a comment on a video, and it's like, hey, someone's like venting. You're like, hey, like you're probably having a bad day. But like this time, it wasn't like, like that's normally my strategy to deal with. Be like, hey, look, you know, sorry, you're having a bad day. But when it's like, it just kept coming, and it wasn't like, and it, like my and my philosophy became is that if this stuff keeps coming, I'll engage with people whose icons are like them or their real person. But if it's like, you know a Twitter bird or like a picture of someone on the show that's not them. I'm like, yeah. I can't, you know, I'm just, not, I'm not going to do it, but I don't, I just feel like for me, I I'm very, honestly, it's, it's, it sounds kind of weird, but I'm very appreciative that this happened because now I like, I've seen both sides. Like it's easy. Like, Al, oh, you're getting nothing but love all the time. But this time it was like, all right, I can deal with this. No problem. But really like, and when you talk about like Canucks players and stuff like that, I think the thing like sometimes people forget about is like, you know, people have kids and they're going to read stuff and, you know, like families and, you know, it's one, you know, I don't know. I, I just don't know when things evolve that way. And and I don't think it's, it's our place to sit here and figure out how or why, but maybe, you know, I don't know. It, it just was, it was like, you know, I'd always try to find a good way to experience stuff like that. And to me, it was like kind of a wake up call of like, all right, Hey, look, you know, 
what you selectively choose to engage with or you know whether you you comment on the show or whatnot like i'm gonna tell you i'll tell you this like when this the show came on again i'm like oh man like i could you know maybe one day i could play one more time after this i'm like if this is and i asked my wife i'm like hey when i was on like is this what you dealt with and she's like yeah and i'm like i had no like idea and so like yeah that whole desire to do anything again like is gone like it, there's no zero chance like and it's just because it's just not worth it you know and, and, and that's why i like to make some things full circle and i'm sure you probably feel the same way is like just to be able to operate in an environment for you like twitch and youtube where it's like 99.5 percent like sane people that enjoy the content that engage with it and it's like it's not a life or death situation it's just an entertainment medium like I, that almost just levered my um super appreciation for what i already appreciated because to have something like that like even for, and, and like even on your end like you have an extremely large audience and it's not when you log into your twitch show it's not like you know just a bunch of garbage you know like if you go yeah. on like as people sit your similar size on twitch it could be a coin flip where it's just like meme garbage meme garbage me you know and it's um so i don't know so i like i just look i'm very appreciative it happened but also like i'm also going to be very aware like and because i feel like you and i have talked about before like oh yeah i just have thick skin but like if someone you know one of our friends like is getting hammered online or something i'm not gonna think that anymore i'm gonna be like dude, it, it stinks. And, you know, like just try to gas them up on, you know, from the other side. So, yeah, I, I wanted to wait in like on social media. <laughs> I, wanted to, I, I, I was like, I'm going to send some replies here, but then I, I thought better of it and, and cooler heads prevail. And uh, I mean, I think, I think you've got a good attitude about it. Like I, I, I have an attitude about social media that's basically and, and community in general, that is just like, you know, some days is just gonna get you. And, you know, sometimes it's because of the way that, like, you come into the day. And sometimes it's because of stuff that's completely outside of your control. Like, you know, what people are talking about on the on subreddits that end up becoming rumors that end up, you know, you get the idea. So it's uh, I mean, I, I, I do agree with you. I wish people understood that, like. It's real people on the other end, like I always just cringe when I see like a Canucks player makes a mistake. And then, like, on Twitter, they're getting blown up by, like, 12 people who are, like, CEO at School of Hard Knocks. And they're, like, what you? I'm, like, this is, you're, like, 45 years old. And you're blowing up, like, a 22-year-old kid or, like, a 19-year-old kid over a mistake that they made in a game. Like, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even, like, real life. It's just entertainment. Like, get over it. So, I mean, I, I think it's, like, you know, the negativity is very easy to get people down because one negative person can have like an exponential spread like it's not hard to ruin somebody's day but to like make somebody's day takes a lot of concerted effort most of the time so I think it's a lot easier to to kind of have that that negativity from negative people spread you know very virally I guess yeah and and on my end it really like if I if I firmly didn't believe that you know posting on social media and like posting all the content ever if i didn't think that would i mean to say what it is i don't think it helped the bottom line or helped the growth of the show in the community i wouldn't like i wouldn't be anywhere like i would have i would have no social media i may, may have a twitter that i follow like the pistons and maybe like you know <laughs> flight reacts that's it but i would like i would for on my end like after all this i'm like if it if it wasn't in my mind necessary and i i think it's necessary to like grow and keep moving the needle i would be a ghost online it's just I, that's just my take on it that's what i would do i did if you if you didn't find like is it the same for you or are you different i don't want to put words in your mouth um it's hard because like i think i do have like a, a social media compulsion in the sense that like my go-to if i'm just looking at my phone is like just scrolling through twitter but i also there have been times where i'm like you know i think that it, i might be happier the the if i disabled it but the problem is like i think you get it if, if you're in the business that we do you have to have a community outreach in some way to tell people what's happening or like the, you know interact with people like the positive people that are sending you messages and i think people sometimes they get it twisted they're like oh you only want positive messages 
it's not really like that. It's more like like a message that's nice criticism is totally fine. It's only when you get like negative messages from people who don't know how to write to another human being that you're like, I don't want to see this. It's not like, oh, I only want the positive stuff. But um, I I think like my experience historically is like if you're going to get rid of one, it spills over into the, you know, even now, like, so I, I'm liking the Discord and I'm sure we'll talk about it at like another level. But like the Discord for the first couple of weeks was like, I'm pogged to be here. And now some of the channels on the Discord are like, did he see the comments on this series? If he didn't, I'm going to keep posting them in this channel until he sees them. And I'm like, I saw them. <laughs> for the love of God, I saw them. So I think like, I, I certainly think like at the end of the day, you know, whenever this YouTube Twitch stuff peters out for, or we choose to, you know, stop interfacing with it. I, I do think that there will be a period for sure where I'm like, I'm just offline. It's going to be sweet. <laughs> do, do you think, uh, speaking of, cause you got, you know, October's coming up. Do you think, yeah. will you be like, pull out all of the, you know, all your devices for that time? Or are you, Mm, probably not because i don't know i i think like it's not the and you, you might have a different perspective because you've been through it so i'd be interested to hear but i think like uh realistically my philosophy right now is just make it through those first few months i recognize like it's going to be a huge change and my my free time is going to be like mega limited and clumped in areas where I didn't know it was going to be and then I'll lose all of it here. So like I'm definitely I'm taking a lot of time off like to be around the family, but will I be like completely off of social media? I don't know. Maybe uh you know I've been soothing the baby for an hour and I then it goes to sleep and I'm like I'll be on Twitter for 5 or 10 minutes or something. <laughs> yeah, you're going we'll to you're going to need it. You're going to need it. <laughs> you're going you're to need some of those flight memes I send you. Um but that's just so like I guess to like put a positive spin on I I think you know and the end of the day you know I think we're both grateful for the communities that are present in in that watch you know the content we put out and and that the fact that it's you know generally really, really positive because if it like and I know there's some creators out there that that have whether intentionally or unintentionally they presented themselves in a way that is like hey like it could be satire it's like hey come at me I'm like yeah <laughs> like. I mean, that's going to, that's going to wear like, you know, but, uh, but I, I don't know. I'm just, I, to me, like, I know it was an L and like dealing with all that, but I also like, I, it was a, I think an important experience to go through. Uh, and I, I know you're, you're putting a bow on it, but I'm also like, in terms of like influencing the community, the best, like, and it's only been like a year and a half or two years, I guess, since I've been trying to turn things to the positive, but it's worked pretty well. People I think are right. You should always whenever possible reinforce positive stuff like wait i think a bad habit i used to have is like getting a compliment and just scrolling past mm -hmm. when it would take like an iota of effort to just click the heart or reply and say thank you or whatever but people are always like don't give the negative stuff attention i totally disagree in the sense that like i feel like there are a small percentage of people who are bad actors who are like, I just want to rile this person up. And those people, you're better off just muting and moving on and they can waste hours, you know, every month trying to bait you or whatever. But then I think there's a lot of people who just get wrapped up and psychotic for whatever reason. And they they lose, they can become delusional and they don't realize that they think they're a normal person, but they're caring an abnormal amount about something that is causing them to become a jerk. And when you, you know, highlight those comments and you go, you got a real weird energy coming off of you right now and you're acting like kind of an a-hole. I think that that sends a message A to them and B to other people that are kind of getting wrapped up in it as well. That like, you know, it's a shock to the system. Like, oh yeah, this person sees this and also, if you examine it through, like, you know, a sober mindset, absolutely, I recognize now that that's not okay. So, the, historically, like, I, I really, that, like, don't feed the trolls is one thing that I totally agree with. Like, if somebody comes in and is like, ha-ha, bald, you know, you're like, what do you, you know, pe I, I think when people respond to that, they do themselves a disservice. But when somebody whose name you've seen around for a while is being a jerk, I think calling them a jerk is like, you know, you're, you're standing up for yourself. 
And if they're like, oh, well, you know, like, mm, like bad, you know, bad faith arguments, then you can just, you know, mute them and move on. <laughs> but, you know, I think I think it does a service to to give people the benefit of the doubt that like, hey, you might not realize it, but you're being kind of a, an aggressive weirdo right now. So, <laughs> like, knock it off, please. No, uh, you know, I, I think that's important because like what you just mentioned, like I, I picture there's something going on on the back end right now. I'm like, there's, you know, I don't want to get into it, but there's like an individual that like, keeps asking this question. And I'm like, I haven't addressed it because I don't want to like address it. But now I'm like, just address it. And then like, say, Hey, look, this is not appropriate. Like, you know, move on. And, but I think like, cause I've seen you do it on one of your live shows before. And it's like, sometimes like, you'll see like some, some Monka S go by, you'll see like, uh, you'll, you'll see like streamer mad, but then you'll see a lot of people say like, Hey, like actively trying to change the conversation because it's awkward. <laughs> you know, like, well, it's like, <laughs> but if you don't, it's going to continue on. Um, so anyways, but no, and I think it's important because ultimately, whether you want to agree with it or not, you know, I think it's true is that you're responsible for how people are acting just based on how you, how you engage with it, how you don't engage with it. If there's like junk going on in your chat, like your fault, like my, mine too, you know? So I don't know. That, that's my take on that. But let's, let's, let's pivot to your W. Uh, and I think it's a pretty big one because it's been oh, four, four months of toil and anguish. Oh, I, four months, I think, is a, an accurate description. And I, I'll give some context to this as we talk. But I've, my dub of the week was 100% finishing Dark Souls 2, which uh, there's so many learning lessons wrapped up in this that is like it, it's an invaluable experience <laughs> for it to be done. In the sense that, like, A, it's a relief that it's done because I don't think the game is very good. B, um, like, I actually, when you audit the time that I spend on stream, I don't have a lot of free stream time where I, like, choose what I want to play. Um, so, like, you know, Mondays are always variety. Tuesdays are always Unity. Maybe something afterwards. Wednesdays are always variety. Thursdays for a long time were Dark Souls 2 and Sundays are Deadly Premonition 2. So I got, like, no wiggle room really to play solo stuff and it really started to like erode my enjoyment of the the stream on on thursdays now the good news is i think we were able to bounce it to the point where my own frustration with dark souls 2 got to the point where it became entertaining in its own right but like it was i wouldn't say catastrophic but it was like a bad entertainment decision <laughs> and a bad business decision really it was like yeah because like so in like may i've been I, like i don't grind hard at the milestones i don't put like incentives or anything for like subscriber milestones but i've been like at a level below a milestone for like two years and then in may i started to see like i was like man we're right up against that milestone like if everything continues as it is doing right now we'll probably cross over that milestone and then as soon as dark souls 2 started we dipped a little bit and we're like <laughs> we're far away from it and i'm not sure it's all due to dark souls 2 real quick what were you playing before you made the switch to to dark souls 2 i think i went straight from dark souls 3 into dark souls 2 mm. so it was like you know, that is an I mean, so three decision. is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three is good. And yeah, I remember you beat Nameless, which was like a pog moment, like in the community and like, you know, the, the yeah, lore. Yeah, exactly. And then, so you hit that and you follow it up with, what, what? <laughs> well, and it, <laughs> it's also like, because like, and you know, things are constantly changing. So like, originally back in April, people were like, uh, hey, there's too much solo content. So it would be nice, like, you know, if you started like another series or something like that. And I had so much solo time for the stream that it was possible for me to be like, yeah, we'll take one of the streams that's solo and make it like a longer playthrough. But then like Rob's computer, he fixed it. So the Wednesday stuff that was solo for like a month and a half or two months is now the NLSS. And now I'm locked in on this on this game that I'm playing three hours a week that took like 40 hours to beat. And it just, it reminded me, like, 
you know, <laughs> of when I played like The Witcher. And I like after I played The Witcher 3, I was like, I'm never going to do a long game on uh, Sundays again. And, uh, you know, I, I did it on Thursdays instead. And here we are. So but like, was there any other? So think back to that that moment. Was there any, you're coming off the high of Dark Souls 3, and like you would call that a good entertainment and good business decision, Dark Souls 3? Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, was there any other way, like thinking back, I mean, you made you made a decision, you learned from it, but like, yeah. was there anything else in the running, or is it like, Dark Souls 2, we're locked in, we're going back, forget Bloodborne and the Pogs, just your, we're going Dark Souls 2? I did one, I did, uh, randomizer i did three and i was like two is i haven't played it in forever it seems like a natural fit okay so like was there anything i would change yeah i probably wouldn't commit to the sastis but like it wasn't like i did the sastis just as a meme thing it was like people by and large don't really like dark souls 2 so i thought we'll put a little carrot on a stick that's like hey we'll add a little bit of you know potential entertainment value to it and then probably i mean it, it probably added three weeks would be my guess which i wish it didn't but uh you know i i've learned a valuable lesson we committed a little bit too hard to the bit okay so you commit to the bit so your takeaway is you're kind of back in the witcher 3 protocol like what are you like what is your hardest takeaway from that and be like hey look i will never do this again and in regards i will make sure to do more of this i think it's very important for me to always have a stream where I can play whatever I want and pivot like week to week. Um, Cause like, I, I really think in general, I don't get to, like, it's not my, it's, it's hard to say when games are long, but they're perfectly in the wheelhouse, like fallout, new Vegas, deadly premonition one, and maybe deadly premonition two stuff like that is, is great. But like, if they're a miss, they're like quicksand, <laughs> like you get sucked in, the audience starts to dwindle and it, it becomes kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Especially when you're like halfway through and you're like, oh my God, I'm only halfway through and I got to, it's like too late to just yeet it because you put so much work into it, but you can't, you still at the same time are like, man, this is going to take like another two months to get through. This is insane. I mean, like three weeks was just one DLC in Dark Souls 2. So. Did, did you, was there any point when you seriously considered mm -hmm canceling it just because they're like hey this is a bad business decision and it's not fun to watch no but it probably would have been smart to give up on the sastis like at the first sign of friction instead of committing to it hard but you know it's it's a learning lesson at the end of the day and i'm i'm like on a high because <laughs> this is the dub of the week because yeah. i'm like now I get my Thursday back and I feel like I can actually be more entertaining now that I have the opera. Now that I know that I can structure a show and not have it be like, it might be three hours of just fighting the same boss over and over. I think it's a, it's a very positive thing. I'm very excited to have that back. No. Yeah. And, uh, and I think like, you know, cause I always try to like, you know, learn whether I, you know, I make a decision or someone else does, but when it comes to like, Dark Souls 2, and because uh, I was thinking, and tell me if this crossed your mind at all. And I'm trying to think of I thought if I've thought about it all. Like Neo, I was think close to, like not close, but at least considered it because Neo was like a little bit, you know, like it's a long game. But then you you play out, all right, hey, you grind this thing out for another month, or you stop, and then it becomes a long running reminder and meme. Like, oh, remember when he didn't yeah. finish Dark Souls 2? Or the say you know, he couldn't handle the say <laughs> like it's almost like what's what's worse? Yeah. You know, grinding it out or you know, dealing with that meme, you know? So It's dealing with the meme, I think. <laughs> Unless you're right on the financial edge, I guess, but I don't know. I think he you know, in principle is really nice to just have it done. Yeah. Is what it comes down to. So like, you know, now I don't have to do it again. And now, you know. It's it's over forever, which is fantastic. And uh, I mean, I, it, I think the lesson for me, and it's been a, a learning experience to just to encapsulate it on my end, is like when I first started YouTube, I would like play whatever. But if I didn't like it, I would send it, you know, and then people got like rankled over it a little bit. You get a reputation for like not finishing things. And then I became much more picky and choosy about what I started playing, but I made sure to finish it all the way. And a lot of the same people are like, this isn't what we meant. 
<laughs> they, they were like, I, I hope the lesson has been learned by both parties, myself and the audience. That's like, be careful what you wish for. Because you made the jokes for for five years about like, when are you going to get this? Now you got it. And it kind of sucked. So <laughs> well, now, but now and I've, and I've learned my lesson in the future. Like people are like, oh, what's he going to play next? Is he going to play this 40 hour game or this 30 hour game? I'm going to be doing hour, 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 45 minutes, two hours, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be beautiful variety and freedom for a little <laughs> bit. And if you want to watch a longer playthrough that builds a story from front to back, watch Deadly Premonition 2 on Sundays. That's that's where that's going to be for the time being. I, I will say, like... Because I, I have fond memories of Dark Souls 2. And then this will go put the bow on Dark Souls 2. Like, it's the first one I, I beat. Beat it twice. Like, I remember, it, like, outside of the, the, the horses, I remember being really fun. But at the same time, I also strongly value your opinion. And, like, in my head with the journey of, you know, how I play the Souls games, like, it's going to be fairly inevitable. I think at some point, it's going to loop back around. And so, like, in my mind, I have this loose, like, storyline and arc. But... No, it's like I got I'm thinking about taking the middle page of the script and just yeeting it because like <laughs> I don't remember it being like that bad, but I also am not coming hot off a playthrough like you. You know what I mean? If you here's what I'll say. I think it's palatable if you use a real weapon mm -hmm. and then the only other thing like I think that's enough. And then the second thing would just be don't try to force Horse Valley. Like just summon those dudes at the start of Horse Valley and then get through it and then be done. Like don't I, I guess all I would say is don't put too many self-imposed restrictions on yourself. And I think you could have a fun time. But it is compared to the other Souls games. It's like it's just a little bit too long for me. And it, I think I mean, we this isn't like a Souls podcast, but like. I think there's some really, really good bosses in Dark Souls 2, like uh, Sir Knight Alone or whatever his name is, and then the Burnt Ivory King, and then Dark Lurker's a great boss, and Fume Knight's a great boss. But then there's also so many bosses that are simple, just like, it's like 10 skeletons, and it's like 50 rats, and then there's like one huge rat and six little dogs. Like, it's just... <laughs> It's it's got some parts of the game that are just a completely like bereft of inspiration, but <laughs> um, completely unrelated. Is it did it spark any desire for you to go back and play Hollow Knight? Oh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know my opinions on Hollow Knight. Yeah, I was, and I that's I love uh, and I, this is an aside, I guess. I love asking Malf about because he has such a positive <laughs> relationship with his community. And then just to hear him go off about how people acted when he played Hollow Knight is like sweet vindication. I I don't know what it is, but like I I had that a little bit with Demon Souls and with Sekiro. Mm. People are like, mm. you know, because I'm not I'm just I'm playing Sekiro and I'm not really using the tool. And people are like, mm. what's he doing? He's not using the tool. He's not like that. Doesn't is, is the tool resin? I'm like, no, I'm just like is playing. But like people like. I don't, there's like those few games, man. Uh, I know we talk about a lot, but there's a few games that stoke the fires of, of the loins of chat. And, you know, so I like, sometimes I like it, you know, it's, it's I mean, I have, I get, I, I laugh about it in your chat, but like <laughs> I was there when you fought, uh, lady butterfly for the first time. Yeah. And you're like neurons just completely saturated. You know, you're, you're paying 100% attention to the game. And there's like 30 people in chat that are like, you got to do this. And I'm like, do you think like you're very pro backseating when done yeah. properly, but like, it's the first time on the roller coaster basically. And you're like, here's where the drop happens and what it's going to feel like. Like, just let the guy, <laughs> let him fail a couple of times or succeed like out of nowhere and have it be a great moment. I just can't imagine being like, Oh, he lost to the boss one time. You know what he needs is like the handbook of how to make sure he doesn't die again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it it erodes the moments that make the series like that so enjoyable i guess is yeah. what i'm trying to say yeah and my take is that i always say it i always say hey look like however you guys want to see this that's how i'll play it so if you guys want to say hey something big is about to jump out of the corner and, and here's like 
all right if that's what you want like i'm not gonna you know and then and like most time it'll be like that stuff will get like waved out but like i just like to remind people like I, i'm i'm playing this for your enjoyment yeah I'm, I'm really excited to play Sekiro, but i'm playing it also because i know you're really gonna like it so let me present it in a way that you're gonna like it. if you want it in a way where i'm like oh yeah thanks so uh, i just need to use the shrook in there and it knocked her down and all oh, the fight's <laughs> over you know versus like figuring it out or you know grinding it out with not out using a tool and then when you beat her you're like oh hey but anyways um so to pivot from that to my w the week and it, and you may laugh a little bit but so i haven't really i don't want to say it like and put something out there that's not true but i haven't necessarily checked my email since may meaning that like i'll i'll check it and then i'll just scroll and like i'll click on a headline if it's like good everything else like I'll, you know, I'll check it once or twice a day. And if something like interesting, I'll, I'll see it. But you know, there's, that's a, so there's, I had about 5,000 emails. So I got to the office today. Today was a rerun day. So i set up the rerun and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go through 5,000 emails. And, and I learned a valuable lesson. Check I, your email. Check my email. Like there was like some sponsored stuff in there. I'm like, this was a great fit. Why didn't I do it? I'm like, well, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't check your email. Um, so like, I, you know, it felt good to kind of go through that. So if, you know, if you're someone like I know Indy's in the chat, like Indy sent me an email. Like if you just got a response from an email you sent me four months ago, that's why. But it felt good to like, it's weird. Like that's always been looming in the back of my head is like a roadblock to like, all right, next I got to finish writing like the Sekiro script and then hire the channel editor. But I just like, it was like such an anchor. I don't know why, like self-imposed anchor. I'm like, okay, hey, look, this is done. We're caught up. And now it's like, okay, now to the next thing that's been looming. But I don't know, like, how you handle emails. There was one in there from, uh, well, we could talk about from David Miyazaki. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's probably, like, the first, not the first, maybe the second or third time I've ever emailed you. But before we talk about... Yeah, it was about, weird to see it. I was like, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> but, but before we talk about what was in the email, how do you handle email? Because I know you have Miyazaki, you have a mailbox that Miyazaki checks. Yeah. Um. I mean, I get... Is because David, I think we started working together in 2015. So I have like a pre existing relationship with some companies that will then bypass the business inbox and email me directly. So I, I'll handle that. But really, David is kind of like, he's like the great filter. So he pays very close attention to the sponsored stuff. And then maybe a couple of times a week, I'll ping him and be like, hey, did this game send a code to the inbox? Or can you send a, a request for a code to these guys? But that's basically, uh, yeah, he's the he's the bodyguard at the at the door of communications. Um, so do you not see any of those emails that go to your business? Yeah. Okay. I mean, in theory, I have access to the to the inbox, but I try not to check it because if I check it, it's like. What am I what do I have David for, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's there to handle the communication so that I can do other stuff. So I, I spend my time elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, I. I going going three months without checking my inbox really would would spike my anxiety in a <laughs> huge way for sure. But that's also because I got personal stuff coming into the inbox, yeah. you know, and you know it's got to be handled in a timely fashion. But um, I mean, I, I tweeted about it like maybe a couple of weeks ago. I do have eight hundred and seventy thousand unread emails in Gmail, so it's like you know, I, at some point I think I, I hit an email philosophy where. Uh, and a lot of people get rattled by what I'm about to say. And I will say first, about half a million of those are just like blank and blank has subscribed on YouTube. Yeah. You know, back when YouTube had subscriber emails that would get sent to your inbox yeah. before I turned those off. But um, like I my my belief is if you cold send an email. I will look at the headline and if the headline doesn't look interesting, I won't even open it. You know, it doesn't matter to me. So I, I so many times I get uh, emails from people that are like, hey, like we there's a press release. Our game is coming out. And I'm like, I don't need to reply to that. Like, that's that's not warranted. So I do take a pretty laissez faire approach to email, I guess. Uh, but did, did you say 8000 or 800,000? 870,000. Yeah. <laughs> do you have Gmail? I do, but I'm like, people are like, delete them. I'm like, why delete them? At some point, you know, you have like an ocean 
You're, what are you going to do? Drain half the ocean. You still got an ocean there. Like Gmail has such good like archiving and search functionality. Like why would I delete the email? It just doesn't, it would take me weeks to get the inbox zero with no purpose whatsoever. But you feel good. Like I got to inbox Not six. Really. And I was like, <laughs> I, like if to go from like 5,000 or 6,000, whatever it was to, to six. I'm like, yo, like I know I didn't, create anything today like no videos no stream yeah. but it felt good um but anyway so kind of the last topic and we haven't talked about this but it was in the email with Miyazaki um we we're talking about you know the the paternity plan you know yeah. so you're gonna leave roughly and we're and we I we mentioned we would talk about this online so I'm not just throwing this out at yeah, yeah, Ryan. yeah so roughly you're leaving October beginning of October probably the end of September end of September yeah and then roughly and if you're not comfortable talking about this it's fine roughly yeah, when yeah. do you think it'll come back i i'm still trying to figure it out for sure like realistically i would say a month is probably i don't know if i'd say that's the minimum because i do think that it's plausible i could fit in like a like it, it's tough right because it's not like i i want to come back necessarily um too early because obviously like i have a lot of priority with my family but i'm sure that there will also be after the first few weeks there will be some times where it's like okay i have a little time you know i have an hour here or there and you know you never know when you're going to get interrupted over the course of that hour i'm sure but you know we'll we'll see what happens in that period definitely like minimum a few weeks of like uninterrupted being away got it so let's just say <clears throat> so let's just say I mean, what do you what do you think is realistic that's I, I should be asking you the questions um I, I think it'll you'll know like you'll know i what i like if i were to to predict i bet you go dark for two to three weeks and then i bet you like you pop on and do like just a little like hey like little return yeah little return yeah. to normalcy <laughs> for you you know not like not even like you're worried about business, but just like, hey, it would be nice to like do something that's like, have a, you know, resemblance of, you know, pre that life. Uh, but yeah. I know, I, I mean, like, I, you'll know, and I think it's different for everyone. But I think my my prediction is you go two to three weeks dark, and then we'll see you pop your head up, hang out for a little bit, and then probably go down again. Um, but, uh, you know, and I'm sure, you know, you'll, you'll iron that out. But what I want to talk to you about is, is, you know, and David's like, Hey, is the podcast still going to go on? And then like my take, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to still go on, but here's my idea. Let me run it by Ryan. Um, is that we'll have like a, a rotating spot where you are until you're like, yeah, I'm back. Or I want yeah. to come back this week. Or is that something you'd be cool with? Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Um, I mean, it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it's a positive. I would rather have the momentum from the podcast for sure. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, it's no, no problems for me. All right. So, David Miyazaki, it's still going to go on. And that was my thing is like, you know, I can imagine there'll probably be a time when like I'll be gone for a week or whatever. And, you know, it'd be it'd probably the same thing happen. And that's what I mean. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what I would want to have happen is like, you don't yeah, want to yeah. like make the podcast go dark and you know stuff goes on from there but um i it will be interesting because we're getting like we're halfway through eight. august we're about eight weeks from the due date <laughs> which means that we're probably i mean we're on like threat level light green right now <laughs> the odds of labor right now are pretty low but in like a couple of weeks we get to threat level yellow <laughs> and then i think <laughs> Like once you hit like 37, 36 even weeks, you get to like any moment. This could be this could be happening. So so I'll plan. So just for just for planning purposes, last week of September, we'll say that's like probably your at least for check the wire, that's probably your first week where you're gone. gone. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on how September shakes out. Like that's right, that's the window right now where we're figuring out when it's gonna be. <laughs> So I, I would say, and actually I'll probably take a, a little, like maybe five days or a week off before as well, depending on whether it's an expected, like, Hey, go to the hospital. We're having it uh, by appointment or whether it's like, we got to go now. Yeah. Um, 
So, I mean, I, I honestly, like the last month or so, and this is, you know, ancillary to the podcast itself, but the last month or so has been kind of an exercise in winding down, if that makes sense. So, like, the first six months of this year were redlined to the extreme. <laughs> Tons of content, <laughs> all in on all content, also all in on socials. And it was like, it was great, but it was an unsustainable routine essentially and now since then there's been a little bit of winding down of like hey you know this series won't be able to make it today and <laughs> as much as you know you could rationalize it in the other way you would be like i gotta make sure i hit all these milestones before i go away otherwise like i'm wasting time but it's really more now like let's start to get myself psychologically into the mode where like yeah i've got other priorities right now that are going to take precedent for quite some time so like a delivery yeah <laughs> Well, was that the, this is the one time this is the way it is yeah it's the one series i will not interrupt for a delivery so instead i just end up looking at the delivery guy out of my window and going like <laughs> um i will say there was a tweet and i feel like i don't know why i felt um compelled to share this with you but i just did because we were talking about it last week someone uh, and I can't find it but the person knows out there that they wanted to just pass along to you that when you're packing the the let's go bag, the it's time bag, throw some granolas in there for you. you know? <laughs> so, it's a good idea so I don't have to live on the, the hospital vending machine. But the other thing I saw, and I don't know if you saw this, I, it was a pretty prominent uh, Twitch streamer posted something like, hey, like I'm taking a month off. Yeah. See ya. You know, I'm like, ah, you're like, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see that more because, you know, I, I, there's just no playbook on how to do this, which I think is, you know, part of the allure of the podcast and, and what I enjoy about it is like figuring out like, my man's like, he's about to have a kid. He Right now, he doesn't have a kid. And uh, by episode 35, you're going to be knee-deep in diapers and and other stuff. So it, I think it'll be an interesting experience. But nonetheless, as we wrap up things here, I, we wanna, I'm going to wrap it up with a singular question here um, from the community. Uh, this one comes from... Uh, uh, and I feel like we get this one a lot. So let me let me pivot here. Okay, this this is an interesting one. This is from Dance Number. It says, would you say it's better to keep trying different types of video to find one that sticks with an audience or keep making videos you enjoy personally that may or may not have the potential to blow up? That's a good one. What's your take I think on I that? have a different uh, mindset than the, the traditional advice. Mm -hmm. I think that it is better to make the stuff that is successful up to a point. Like if you're below the threshold of livability, I have a very like pragmatic philosophy on it, which is like, if you're trying to get to the point where you can do it full time, you should, if you find something where you got some traction, keep grinding on that until at least you get to the point where you're able to do it. And you'll, you'll probably like learn to like it. I know that sounds like, like arranged marriage <laughs> rationalization, but like, I mean, it, it really, I, I I feel like I'll say it because I don't think a lot of content creators would say it. I would much rather like have a job that is recording a game I like in as my full-time gig than have like a full-time job that's outside of the industry and then a part-time gig where I'm like, oh, I love Dauntless. So I play <laughs> Dauntless and get like very little attention. Not to say there's not people who are crushing the Dauntless game, but... So I, I mean, if you're if you're watching the podcast for the purposes of getting advice that maybe would like further your ability to succeed in the industry on like a financial level, then I I think that it's it's wise to if you find something that works, hit that. And then my secondary advice would be while you're hitting that, siphon some people off to the stuff that you also like playing. And sometimes like. I hate to say it, but I think people have like a very like utopian view of how the content's going to work. They're like, oh, I got famous playing auto chess, but my real dream is playing World of Warcraft classic. Sometimes you're going <laughs> to try to play the thing you love and people are going to be like, this is boring. <laughs> and as a result, you're you're going to be like, maybe my time is better. Like, and this is now spiraling like into no, a lot but of different is, that's, that's, But that's fire. I mean, what you're like, that's true. I say it to Kate all the time. Sometimes I see streamers and they're playing stuff on their stream for like eight or 10 hours a day that people by and large don't really like watching. And I'm like, I think you'd be better served maybe doing like a six hour stream of stuff you like 
or the stuff that people like watching, I should say. And then your downtime, maybe playing like two or three hours of the thing that you love to play. Because I don't know. I mean, I, I treat it as as a it's a hobby, but it's also you know something I love to do, and it's also a job. So I'm like, I don't know. Maybe today, oh, I'd love to play you know, Final Fantasy 14 or something. But I know if I turn on Final Fantasy 14, it's going to be like one tenth of what, you know, I could get if I play Fall Guys and I like Fall Guys. So maybe it'd be better for me to play Fall Guys for an hour and then Final Fantasy 14 off stream. Yeah. Sometimes the market's just not there for the, you know, like, you know what I always think of it as? I apologize because I'm really taking no, control no, of the no. conversation here. But I think of it like in my hometown, there's a lot of like uh, Iranian owned, pizza places and they have like an iranian food menu which is stuff that obviously i'm pretty sure that's what they wanted to actually make their restaurant they probably didn't want to just franchise a two-for-one pizza and then like that's not their dream right but in order to do that mm -hmm. in the uh in the market that my hometown was they had to kind of have a pizza shop and then occasionally some people might come in and be like give me the lamb kibbe or whatever you know so i i think that's kind of the way i see this it's like sometimes you're gonna have to you know franchise like a starbucks and then on the side of it maybe you can sell homemade baklava yeah no I, I, i'm with you and i think it all comes down to the question you gotta ask yourself is do you want to do it full time or not and i think ryan kind of mapped out the way to like do that it's like you, you know, as much as I would love to stream Ultima online, which when I do, I'm, I'm glad that I don't like, you just don't do it. It's like, I know, Hey, look, people are excited when I play Tarkov. And guess what? After two years, like a lot of those people are also excited to watch souls. You know, we're like, I, you know, I really wanted to play the souls games, but you got to get them in the door first. And, and it's the thing is like the, the dream is when you find a game like Tarkov for me, where I'm like, I love the game. Oh, and it pogs up. And I'm sure, you know, you've had the same ones and I'm sure there's, and let me ask you this. Has there been a, ever been a game that like pogged numbers wise? And you're like, eh, so it's okay, but I'm going to keep <laughs> playing it because it's really good. Like numbers wise. Um... Not that I can really think of recently. But I'm not, that's not to say that it hasn't happened, though. I'm trying to think. The opposite, by the way, is easy to find. Stuff that people don't want to watch, but you yeah. want to play. That's yeah. like a dime a dozen. I can't really think of much that was in like the opposite camp where I was like, oh, I feel compelled to play this for no other reason except for the numbers. Like, oh, yeah, that's a good example, actually. Like Smash, sort of. Like there was a time where I like hit the end of Smash. And uh, like for me, but the viewership was still good. So I was like, that's yeah, easy content. I'll keep I'll keep playing a little bit of it. But it's not like I hate it. It's more like, you know, I, I wouldn't be playing as much of it were it not for the economics, I suppose. <laughs> uh, just one or two stick out to me. One, and I think I've talked about it before, is I played uh, this mobile game on YouTube and it just did really well. It's called Fallout Shelter. Like I, I really oh, yeah. liked Fallout at the time and I played it the day it came out and it was like, like a really good running series but it and i enjoyed it but it got to the point where i'm like okay like i'm good but it's funny like I, like once a month i'll still get like comments be like hey i really like your fallout shelter i'm like that was like in 2016. <laughs> but you know why you you actually <laughs> sparked something yeah. for me earlier this year i played a game called uh 60 seconds which is uh a little similar it's kind of like a choose your own adventure mm. like bunker simulator yeah. and i hit the point where like i got all the content and People were still like, are you going to play more? And I'm like, I mean, I guess like I could just do it again, but it just doesn't seem that interesting to, to go back at it. I kind of did it all. But like the viewership was awesome yeah, for that. So I've seen Chad, yeah. 60 seconds <laughs> pog, 60 seconds was awesome. All right. Well, speaking of 60 seconds, thank you guys for leaving 467 reviews as of episode 26. Uh, I do want to read one out. Um, this is from... Uh, snap chatter one three three seven that is leet for leet speak um this says dan and ryan offer up a passive conversation a variety of topics to the content creator workflow podcasts can be listened to in the background and actively when a topic perks interest five out of five stars so snap chatter thank you for leaving that review and thank you to everyone that's been tuning in live on twitch and listening after the fact on spotify soundcloud uh, Stitcher, Google Podcast, or watching the VOD after the fact on youtube.com slash northern line. We got a question via Twitter. It said, hey, um, where can we watch the VODs? 
and it's at youtube.com slash northern line but then i just remember the question was actually why can't we have the the podcast go live thursdays when you record them i don't know because it's just tuesday so i don't we don't have an answer for you but uh, <laughs> for, for northern line and myself thank you guys so much for tuning in hope you guys enjoyed the podcast and we will see you guys next tuesday if you're listening or thursday if you're watching live see you guys